Slavery, one of the largest, darkest, and deepest scars in America's history. This heartless travesty was powerful enough to shake the world and split the nation down the middle. The practice of trapping African men and women and shipping them across the grueling middle passage of the Atlantic to a life of forced labor was well established by the 19th century. By the time the late 1700s rolled around, it seemed like the South's involvement in this evil system of slave trade was unchangeable, ingrained and institutionalized too deeply to ever be purged from America's agrarian, plantation-based Southern economy. In the face of this unshakable parasitic bond rose the first whispers of the abolition movement. The abolition movement was the product of countless speeches, essays, and appeals made by some incredibly forward-thinking and progressive individuals that shaped the views of the public during that instrumental time period and beyond to modern day. In this film, we will examine how the instrumental speeches and efforts of Frederick Douglass, Elijah Lovejoy, and Harriet Tubman turned a nation against the practice and changed the minds and hearts of the American people enough to drive them to war. These are some of the people who made this movement possible and inspired the North to finally put an end to slavery in America. Born a slave in Maryland, Frederick Douglass spent his early life learning to read and write in secret from his owner's wife. Ever since those lessons, the reformer was on a quest for knowledge and freedom. The longer he stayed in servitude, the more he craved freedom. After a couple of failed escape attempts, Douglas managed to finally find his way out. In 1838, he used the papers of a freed friend to run from his masters. He then boarded a train and headed north. After marrying a woman he met in Baltimore, he settled down and got a job as a day laborer in Massachusetts. He continued his self-taught education and wrote two autobiographies. Due to the reality and shocking details of these autobiographies, Douglas ran the risk of being captured and returned to slavery, so he took a two-year journey through the British Isles. On this journey, he lectured often, gaining a following that bought his freedom when he returned to America. His journey was the first real step to following his calling, becoming an orator and changing the minds of a stubbornly racist society. However, Douglas wasn't only concerned with slave-based and racial inequality. He sought to end oppression in its myriad forms. He attended the Seneca Falls Convention and was an avid supporter of the suffrage movement and even attended temperance rallies. Through his many speeches and powerful emotional appeals, Douglas managed to create a name for himself and a legacy too. He championed equal rights for all, far before it became the norm. The efforts of his essays and speeches sparked the abolitionist movement and allowed thousands to join with him and rally for this noble cause.
Another individual who helped shake the public's opinion on American chattel slavery was Harriet Tubman. In 1822, a black woman was born into slavery named Harriet Tubman, who would grow up to be known as the conductor of the Underground Railroad. During this time, America was divided between the North and the South, or better known as the free and the enslaved. Slavery was largely used in the South due to their agricultural economy. Slavery was a free and easily attainable source of labor. The treatment of slaves was brutal. They were often tied up and whipped, branded, beaten, and sometimes killed. Slaves began running away from their abusive owners in attempts to gain their freedom. Abolitionists built the Underground Railroad, a network of safe houses to aid slaves on their path to the northern states. In 1849, Harriet Tubman escaped her plantation all by herself and traveled 90 miles on foot to Philadelphia. Once she liberated herself, she went back to the South and helped her own family escape as well as 60 others. This was a huge risk because if she got caught, she would have been beaten harshly and brought back to a life of slavery. However, the Fugitive Slave Act which required the return of all runaway slaves was passed in the Compromise of 1850 and threatened all of Harriet's efforts. So she quickly rerouted the Underground Railroad to Canada, where all slavery was prohibited. The new route may have even stopped at Frederick Douglass's house, showing that all abolitionists had to work together to save one another. Tubman went on to serve as a nurse and a cook in the Civil War. She was even the first woman to lead an armed expedition into war, which liberated 700 slaves in South Carolina. Tubman continually risked her life in efforts to save enslaved black people. Harriet Tubman showed that whether you are man, woman, or child, everyone needed to help in the effort to free slaves in America. Born to a prominent congregational preacher in Maine in 1802, Elijah was never content and unsatisfied with his academically successful life. Always meaning to move to Illinois to spread and support the Word of God, Elijah took whatever jobs he could to support his travel there, eventually settling in the unstable and dangerous St. Louis, a major port city for a slave state where pro-slavery and abolitionist groups often congregated. As the editor of an anti-Jacksonian newspaper, this is most likely where Elijah saw the evils of slavery and decided to make a change. In 1836, Lovejoy moved to Alton, Illinois with his new family and established the Alton Observer, which is an abolitionist newspaper. Alton was in turmoil, as although Illinois was a free state, Alton was notorious for slave catchers who profited from and enjoyed catching runaway slaves. These groups heavily protested and threatened Elijah's operation, destroying his printing press over three times. However, Elijah persisted. He called for immediate emancipation and was a passionate abolitionist with eloquent and supportive articles. These events culminated in a raid on a warehouse where Elijah was hiding his printing press in an attempt to burn it down. Despite the bravery of Elijah and his followers, Elijah was shot and killed in a firefight. His sacrifice caused him to be seen as a martyr for the cause of abolition. His contribution was also influential and controversial because of the fact that he was a white man supporting abolition so passionately. His passing effectively grew the cause for abolition.
Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, and Elijah Lovejoy were only a few of the many abolitionists who have fought this battle. Slavery was abolished in 1864 in the 13th Amendment by President Lincoln, yet discriminations against African Americans can still be seen today. The 13th Amendment only rid the country of slavery. Black people were still not given the same rights as white citizens. Segregation was strongly present and spelt out in signs all around cities. They were not slaves anymore, but the only jobs they could get had low pay and terrible conditions. African American people were still mistreated, still beaten, and still killed. After the abolition of slavery, new fighters like Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. stepped up to gain equality and stop segregation. Today, African American people are faced with increasing police brutality. The abolition movement may have ended with the 13th Amendment, but the fight for African American equality continues today.